Good morning, or afternoon, evening, wherever you are. It's Saturday here. During the coronavirus stuff, we're going to do a nice yoga sequence today. Just getting set up outside. Arizona is one of those places where you actually want to enjoy the weather before it gets too hot, rather than before it gets too cold. So we're going to take advantage of that today. Let's see what's the weather like. It is a low stick. You're at a 18C, which is 64 Fahrenheit. For those of you that prefer that scale. <laughs> And then this one. I don't want my dog stepping on the laptop as we record. So, yoga is something you can do anywhere. Just find a nice, comfortable position. We'll get started in a couple minutes. I, I do these a lot. Um, what I have. This is the first time watching one of my sequences. I do a very deliberate approach to yoga. I like to get um, the spine nice and warm before we really do much. I like to do, I would say, a modest number of vinyasa flows. I mean, vinyasa flow sequence, so some classes you might feel like you're doing sit-ups, I mean, not sit-ups, uh, push-ups and up dogs and down dogs like the whole hour. This class would probably do more like four to eight, just like sequences. And what it means is we just do longer, more deliberate flows. So there's not as much repetition, which I find to be more enjoyable, but I certainly take lots of classes where that's the case. It's just, that's not generally how I teach. And that's just my preference and how I communicate, especially since I can't see all of you. I want to take enough time that you can follow what I'm doing and get a nice practice in. Now, I'm starting seated. You're welcome to start however you'd like. You could start laying down. You could start in child's pose, wherever you're at, and breathe primarily in and out through your nose. Put some music on. I don't stream music with the sequence because i figure you might want to pick your own but there is a link to a spotify playlist that i'll be listening to if you want to do the same so i just try to pick a sequence uh playlist that doesn't really have words it's just kind of nice um uplifting something you can follow along with Now, as you get seated and you start to breathe, focus on breathing through your nose. Each inhale, you'll fill up your belly, fill up your lungs, maybe five or seven counts, nice and slow and deliberate. Maybe bring a little more air in before you Pause and then slowly exhale at the same rate that you inhaled. There are lots of different breath techniques. I've taught some of them in various sequences I've taught during this coronavirus quarantine stuff. Just do what you prefer um, to get balanced, to get settled in to get your day started right or to finish off your day, depending on what time you're watching this. Do what's right for you.
Go ahead and open your eyes. Let's inhale, arms up nice and slow overhead. Fingers maybe touch and exhale. Slowly release, We're just starting to open up our spine and the muscles around it, inhale back up. And exhale, slowly release. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale, release. Inhale up overhead again. Exhale, right hand beside your right hips, lean to your right. You can look under your arm, forward or down at your bottom hand. Each can be a slightly different expression. With each exhale, maybe release a little bit deeper into the side. Inhale, gently rise up through center. And exhale, release to the left. Inhale, slowly rise up. Inhale, take a twist. Morning, Otto. How's it going? We're going to twist to the right. Sit up nice and tall. Right hand outside behind you. Left hand outside your right knee. Twisting from your core. Maybe looking over your back shoulder. Each exhale, maybe twisting a little deeper. And then keeping the twist in your body. Inhale, just twist your head forward and over your left shoulder. Next, I'll release. Maybe change the cross of your legs. Now, I'm still sitting on a block. You can take the block out if that feels better. I have a pretty shallow block, so it doesn't matter too much. Either way, inhale up and exhale. Twist to the left. And again, sit up nice and tall. Maybe look fully back over that rear shoulder. Yoga is imperfect. Don't worry about if you're doing things perfect or not. Off to the right. And exhale, release to center. As part of that, your practice is for you. Do what's right for you. If something I suggest is too challenging, modify it to make it easier. If something's too easy, modify it to make it more difficult. If something doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Just do your best. And any time if you need a break, take one and then just rejoin the sequence when you're ready. So we're going to start with a cat-cow seated sequence. So inhale your hands on your shins, glide your lower belly, lower back and chest forward, shoulders back. And exhale, round your spine and look forward, down. Continue with your own breath and you could inhale or exhale opposite to me if you prefer. There are different opinions on when you inhale and when you exhale in yoga. The key is to just continue to breathe and people will argue very strongly for each. And I just think you need to find what works best for you. You notice my dog and my son and others will gather and interlace them and point your fingers out or bring your hands one over the other and interlace. Then we're gonna inhale our arms up straighten our lower back upper back and exhale round and bring our hands and arms towards parallel to the earth this is a different variation of cat and cow what you doing auto continue to breathe continue to move I'm starting to open up the shoulders and wrists and arms in your back and the spine. One more time in each position. And turn to neutral. Rotate them forward and back. Maybe rotate a little bit on your different points of your bottom. Maybe the other direction a little bit. Take your wrists and just circle them around. And then maybe open them and close them. Open and close. And we're gonna grab our hands, the grip one hand facing the other. Nice strong grip. Elbows out to the side. 
we're just going to teeter totter our arms. So inhale one side up, the other down. Exhale, return to neutral. We'll continue the opposite side, neutral. And what this does is it helps us open up our neck spine on the sides. This act of pulling engages the nerve that goes from our hands to our shoulders to the side of our neck. Once more on each side, return to neutral. Inhale, just look down at your right shoulder. And slowly start to rotate your head down. And exhale over to the left and continue to take a nice big circle. My neck's really tight the past few days. So anywhere you feel discomfort, just slow it down, breathe into it. And after a few circles, maybe pause. Return to neutral. Now we're going to bring our legs forward. I'm just going to check something on the screen, make sure everything's good. All right. Now sit nice and tall. Engage your quads, your glutes, low back. Inhale your arms up overhead. Toes curled up and exhale, fold forward. And maybe bring your palms face up, forearms towards the earth. Don't overdo it here, we're just getting warm. Maybe reach your toes gently, not pulling. Bend your elbows maybe to help your back straighten, but not to actively pull or stretch it too hard. Inhale, slowly rise back up. We're gonna generate some heat. Please stop that off. <laughs> you wanna do some yoga with us, Otto? This one's really fun, sit and do this with me. We're gonna inhale our right leg up a couple of inches and over a couple of inches, and just start to point and flex. Point and flex, just down the ground. Point and flex. It's a very subtle movement that is challenging in its own way. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. And then go ahead and hold the point of your foot for a breath and start to rotate in one direction. Again, nice and slow, continuing to breathe. Point and pause for breath and then rotate the other direction. any point you need a break just lower your heel and continue to rotate but really try to engage your nervous system and your muscles and go ahead and release hey give yourself a little bit of a massage on your quads your hamstrings and calves turn to neutral and now we'll do our other side Inhale your leg up a couple of inches and over a couple of inches and start to point. Yep. Our dog is chewing grass and rocks. Favorite toys. <laughs> and go ahead and point and then start to rotate in one direction, nice and slow and deliberately. Mm hmm. Go ahead and pause and point for a breath and then rotate the other direction. And release. And again, go ahead and massage out a little bit. And bend your knees, come into a bow pose. So you can either grab your hamstrings or you can just sit up as tall as you can and balance. And stretch tall, 
Hands overhead, heels forward. Engage your quads and hamstrings. Whew. Plant your heels. Plant them at the edge of your mat. We're going to windshield wipe our legs side to side. And just with our breath, inhale up, exhale to a side. Inhale up, exhale to the other side. You might feel this in your hips or hip flexors. Once more on each side. We'll turn to neutral. We'll take a few floating bridges here. So walk your feet back towards your bottom, right where your feet can barely touch your hands. And then inhale, float your arms up overhead and your hips up overhead. Let's hold it here for a few breaths before we release. Inhale, slowly roll down, vertebrae by vertebrae, arms to the earth, and exhale, rise back up. Hold up top for a couple breaths. Maybe lift your hips a little higher, maybe come onto your toes. Exhale, slowly release your vertebrae and hips and hands to the earth. Exhale back up. Again, let's hold it for a few breaths. Try to rest on your shoulders and your toes. Inhale, slowly release back to the earth. Inhale, bring your knees to your chest. And gently rock side to side. Maybe come into happy baby. Bring the soles of your feet to the sky or the ceiling. Hands to the outside. And pull your knees towards your armpits. Just gently rock side to side. And maybe bring the soles of your feet together. For those, maybe your feet go further out from you. And try and let those. Hips and knees surrender to the earth. And before we really get going, if you have a block, grab it. Knees out, feet together. Just let our hips open up a bit. If this is too easy, you can always lift up off your block. You might start to shake in either position, and that's totally okay. That's your body releasing trauma and Tension. Wherever you're at, go ahead and release to the earth. Just surrender for a moment into a mini Shavasana. Don't check out, just heels in, toes out. Palms face up and just relax for a moment. And inhale, one arm up overhead and exhale, roll onto that side and bring yourself up to hands and knees in front of your mat. Whenever you're doing hands and knees or your hands in general in yoga, your hands are shoulder width apart. Fingers spread wide, create as little space between the earth and your hands as possible. And you're, even when your arms are straight, your elbows are slightly bent to take pressure off your wrists and to engage your triceps. You think about your outer two fingers and your knuckles and finger mounds supporting you, taking some of the pressure off your wrists. And then your knees are hip width apart, directly behind you. Hey, Otto, what's going on? We're going to do a cat-cow here. And remember, we're not swinging our head. Our head just come along for the ride. So we start from the bottom of our back and through the top of our back. We start to look down. Inhale, lower the belly. Glide the chest forward. Look forward. And exhale. Pull from the top, bottom to the top. We'll continue this one more time. And then after that, you're welcome to continue or work some balance. First, by just bringing your foot straight back and 
just stretching out your calf and hamstring and Achilles a little bit. And then bring your leg up parallel to the earth, toes pointed down. And exhale, knee towards your forehead. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, round. Inhale, straighten. And on your next straighten, you can also bring your left hand forward if you'd like. And then you could bring the knee to your elbow, straighten. And then you could bring them off to the side if you'd like. And then straighten, knee to elbow. Straighten, off to the side again. Straighten, round, straighten, side, straighten, round, and then hold on the next straight. And you can stay here or bend your back knee and bring your front hand around and meet your foot. And glide your chest forward, open your heart, which means bring your chest forward, shoulders back, and then lower just your hand and bring that foot to the left side of your mat and tap twice and just arc it up and over behind you, tapping twice. Alternating sides, continuing to breathe, and focusing on your height and breath rather than width or speed. In your mind, maybe your foot's like all the way up over your head. Once more on each side. Then we're going to come into a child's pose. Knees wide, toes together, hands forward, forehead to the earth. And just surrender. And you're welcome to stay here. Or walk your hands off to the side for a child's pose with a twist. If you're taking a twist, inhale, walk your hands through center, deeper. Inhale, walk your hands back through center. We're gonna come back to hands and knees. How you doing, Otto? You wanna do some yoga with us? Why don't you go get your mat? No, not today, too early. All right, we're gonna inhale, left leg back, and just again, place the ball of your foot on the earth and just rock back and forth on that foot to stretch out the Achilles and hamstring and calf. Then inhale, bring it parallel to the earth, toes pointed down, and exhale round, or you can just do normal cat cow here. Inhale, straighten, exhale round. Inhale, straighten, and then you have the option to bring your right arm forward if you'd like. Knee to elbow, straighten, off to the side if you'd like. Straighten, round, straighten, side, straighten, round, straighten, side, Straighten round and then hold an extension for a breath and then bend your back knee and grab your foot with your hand, chest forward, heart opener. And then inhale, hand down, right or left foot to the right side of your mat, tap twice, arc up and over, tapping twice on each side, breathing, focusing on height over speed. In general, the faster you go in yoga, the easier it is, as long as you don't hurt yourself. But the goal is not ease. The goal is to learn to do things to your best of your ability. And the more time you give yourself, the more time you have to find the right position and get into it. So a lot of my gentler classes will go very slow, restorative classes. Once more on each side. And bring your knees back to center. We're coming to our first down dog. So curl your toes, plant your hands, and straighten your legs back. Form a nice upside down V shape. Look back towards your feet. Keep those elbows bent slightly so your triceps are engaged. If you're not sure if you have enough depth, maybe first start to walk your hands I and mean, walk your feet, walk your dog. Straightening one knee, bending the other, trying to reach those heels to the earth. Maybe they never reach, maybe that's easy. Maybe you inhale and glide forward to a plank. Then bend your knees and hover your knees through bare. And straighten, maybe do that a couple more times just to help you see if you've got the right distance. 
And inhale, walk our hands back to our feet. And exhale, fold forward. Hands might grab the opposite elbow. Surrender your head towards the earth. Straighten your legs, relax your hamstrings. And just surrender. And exhale, fold forward. Maybe your hands come to your shins, your feet, a block or to the earth. Inhale, slowly rise up. Just rise up to mountain first. Engage your quads, engage your glutes, triceps, hands face forward, shoulders relaxed, chest forward. Overhead, interlace our fingers together. Point our hands up top. And exhale, lean to the right. Take a couple breaths here and just lean a little deeper, maybe. Inhale up through center. And exhale, lean to your left. Double breaths. Inhale, rise up through center. Point your top finger. Lift up tall and exhale, lean back. Maybe lift up a little, but not too far. Exhale, return to center. Cactus your arms. Elbows, shoulder height or higher. Inhale, lift your right heel. Exhale, twist to the right. Arms up overhead. And exhale, hands to your low back. Interlace your fingers there if you'd like. Inhale, lean back. Look up. Exhale, bend your knees. Fold forward. Straighten your legs when you reach the bottom. And maybe your hands come up overhead. Inhale, release the bind. Raise your hands past the earth and rise up to chair. Knees bent. Back upright. Shoulders relaxed. Allowing your arms to straighten up overhead. Maybe you bend your knees a little deeper. Maybe you lift your toes a little bit. Inhale, slowly rise up. And exhale, maybe rise onto your toes, lifting your heels. Arms straight. Exhale, release your heels. Pull from your hips, swan dive forward. Inhale, walk forward into down dog again. Come through plank to take side plank. You can either place your knee on the earth, leg back, left leg up, or you can stack your legs. And keto, or stack your legs and lift your top leg. Keto, get side plank, is a few things. Keeping that top shoulder back in the same plane as your legs. Lifting from your hips, keeping that elbow bent so your triceps engaged. And keeping that top foot, toes pulled back to help engage your quads. Exhale, release through center. Inhale, switch sides. Do whichever variation is right for you today. Might not be the same on both sides. Exhale, release through center. From down dog. Inhale, your right leg in the air behind you. Exhale, bend your knees, stack your hips. Inhale, straighten your right leg. And exhale, glide it forward. Come into low lunge. Bring your arms up. We're gonna lean to our right. Bring the right hand under your right hamstring. Left hand up overhead. Inhale, back up through center. Lean to the other side, left hand. Under your right hamstring, right hand overhead. Inhale up. Inhale your right hand to your right hip. Exhale, lean forward and then take a twist. That leaning forward helps decompress the spine, makes the twist more accessible. If your elbow's not coming all the way outside your knee today, that's okay, just do your best. Mine doesn't seem to want to cooperate this early time. Exhale, release the twist. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Just for a gentle half splits. Inhale, come forward. Plant your hands and come up through standing splits. Front leg straight, back leg straight. Forehead comes towards your knee. And walk yourself back into high lunge, low lunge. Bring your front knee back to meet your back knee. And come to narrow knee, child's pose for a breath. 
Inhale, glide your chest forward, keeping your hands planted. Rise to up dog or cobra. And exhale to down dog. It's a little warm out here. I'm gonna take a breath and uh, water real fast. From down dog, you have your left leg in the air behind you. Exhale, bend your knees, stack your hips. Inhale, straighten your left leg. And exhale, glide it forward, come through low lunge. Inhale, body back. Exhale, glide it forward, arms up, shoulders relaxed. It's like a nice full revolution. Then bring your arms up through low crescent, shoulders relaxed, arms straight again. And we lean to the left, left hand under the hamstring, lean to the side. Inhale up through center, exhale, lean to the other side. If you start to fall or you do fall, it's okay, just get back up. Inhale your left hand to your left hip, exhale, lean forward, and take that twist. Hands to heart center, elbow outside your knee if you can. So release to center. Straighten that front leg for half splits. And exhale, slowly walk forward. Come through standing splits. Hands planted, legs straight. Knee towards your forehead. Forehead towards your knee, rather. rather. Exhale, release. Come back through low lunge. Narrow any child's pose for a breath. Inhale, glide forward. Up dog or cobra. Exhale through down dog. Inhale, walk your hands back to your feet. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift, hands to your shins, flat back. Exhale, fold forward again. Inhale, rise up through chair. Exhale, straighten your arms and legs. Maybe come onto your toes. And exhale. Release, hold from your hips, back down to the earth. Walk your hands forward to down dog. Inhale your right leg up near behind you. Exhale, glide it forward. So I'm gonna rise up through high crescent. Inhale, rise back up. Exhale, lean to your left. Whoa. <laughs> Inhale, rise up. Right hand to your right hip. Exhale, lean forward and take that twist again. And now here, you can stay here or open up your arms if you'd like, or bring your hand inside your foot for revolved side angle. And when you're ready, release, bump your back foot up a little bit. We're gonna come into pyramid if you have blocks. Maybe those will help. So your feet are in separate tracks, two to three feet between your feet. Rise up first, square our hips towards that right foot. Back foot's out about a 30 degree angle. Hands on hips, exhale, just fold forward, engage those hamstrings, and just fold till your back wants to start to round, and then stop there for a couple breaths. And then just slightly bend your knee a little more, and surrender forward, then maybe re-straighten that knee. Maybe hold onto the blocks, or maybe you don't need them, and you just touch the earth or your foot, or your shin. Plant your hands, come back to high lunge, and float up to warrior C. Your hands could be forwarded on blocks so they can float. Top legs parallel to the earth. Upper body, if it's floating, is also parallel to the earth. Your hands can be forward or back or to your sides or wherever is right for you. And then plant your hands from high lunge. Bring your leg back. And from three legged dog, you can take a vinyasa flow, or you could just come down to Push up and do a traditional high push up to low push up, up dog to down dog. Inhale, your left leg in the air behind you. Exhale, glide it forward. Coming up through crescent. Inhale, lean here. Or exhale, lean to your left. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lean to your right. Inhale, rise up. 
On your next inhale, left hand to your left hip, exhale, lean forward, and take that twist. And then stay there, or open up your arms, or plant your hand inside your foot. So release the twist, bump that back foot up again, rise up for pyramid, hands on your hips, hips spread forward, inhale tall and exhale, just fold until your body wants to start to round. Inhale, slowly bend that front knee and plant your hands on blocks or on the earth and straighten that back leg again, or top leg again. With just a micro bend in the knee. Release the pyramid back into high lunge. Let's float up to warrior C. And come back through lunge. Take a vinyasa flow, high push up to low push up. You're welcome to stay in child's pose or thread the needle by bringing your right arm up overhead. I need it under your left arm. You can stay there. Your left arm could reach around your right hip. And add a little twist from your belly. Threading the needle, switch sides. Left arm under your right. Maybe that left arm. Sorry. Maybe that right arm outside your left hip. When you teach, I usually mirror, and so I just want to keep that practice going. So I always teach you what I would teach my class rather than how I'm doing it, but sometimes I get backwards. And exhale, release the twist. Plant your hands, come through down dog. Inhale, slowly walk your hands back to your feet. And heel toe your feet out wide. Or come into yogi squat. If you have bad knees, bring your forearms under your knees or sit on a block. Otherwise, knee towards, uh, elbows to your knees, or maybe straighten your arms. And you're welcome to stay here or explore crow pose by planting your hands, bringing your knees towards your armpits or triceps, and just trusting that you can rest forward. Maybe you lift one or both feet off the earth. Maybe your toes come together. Or maybe you're just completely content staying in yogi squat. Be inspired to do what's best for you. Challenge yourself, but don't hurt yourself. Don't do more than your body is and mind and breath are ready to receive. Plant your hands, straighten your legs. Walk yourself forward to down dog. Inhale your right leg in the air behind you. And exhale, guide it forward to coming up to warrior A. Warrior A, front knees bent, back legs straight, front foot's forward, back foot's out at 45 degree angles, and you're on separate parallel tracks. Most of the other warrior poses are on the same track, except for crescents and a few others. Hip forward, you might just grab them and twist them, and then relax your shoulders, and bring your arms straight overhead by your ears. Maybe bend that front knee a little more, make sure you're supported on that back leg, getting equal balance from your front and back legs. You're welcome to stay here or float forward to warrior C again, just as a transition to warrior B, where now your legs are in the same plane, front knee remains bent, upper body's perpendicular to the earth, shoulders relaxed, arms out, hips to the side, and look forward over your hand. We bend that front knee a little bit more, but make sure you're staying upright. Those front toes are doing too much work, lift them and replant them wide. Inhale, flip that, prep, lift, <laughs> flip that front palm and lean forward. And then lean back for reverse warrior, keeping that front knee bent. That leaning forward again is to decompress the spine. Inhale, straighten that front leg, keeping the arms where they are for reverse triangle. Maybe lift that top hand up a little bit higher. And keeping the legs where they are. Inhale, your arms to warrior B arms. And exhale, lean forward and tilt into triangle. And triangle, actively lift up with that top hand. Top shoulders back in the same plane as your legs. That front hand's really not doing much. You don't want to be dumping down to the front. You want to be lifting up high. That helps your shoulders open up. It helps 
other more advanced yoga practices as well. And from triangle, just bend your front knee into side angle. You can keep your elbow on your quad, bring your hand inside, or you could take a wrap. So if you do a wrap, try to keep that top shoulder in the same plane as your legs. So maybe you don't take a full wrap. Maybe you just take a half wrap and your hands are on your hamstring and your back. Then we're gonna exhale, back into a lunge, plant the left hand out. We're gonna do revolved half moon. So right hands out to the side and then twist. It's like a half moon, but opposite hand down. Get yourself off to the side, heels out, toes in for wide legged forward fold. And then exhale, fold and surrender. You can stay here. I'm not gonna do that. Especially on this hard surface out here. We're gonna come up to goddess. So feel toe your feet closer together. Rise up. And now your heels in, toes out in the same plane. Arms up overhead and exhale, lower yourself down. Maybe lift off, off your heels onto your toes. Maybe surrender a little deeper. Inhale, straighten your arms and legs, hands to your hips, heels out, toes in. Hold forward to half lift. Inhale, walk yourself and forward and take a vinyasa flow, high push up to low push up, up dog or cobra to down dog. Inhale, left leg up in the air behind you. Exhale, glide it forward. Rise up to warrior A. Again, front knee bent. Back leg straight, back foot out 45 degrees. Front foot forward. Knee bent. Hips forward. Shoulders relaxed. Equal balance between front and back leg. Arms up high. Continue to breathe. And then maybe float through warrior C. Just to come back to warrior B. Now your legs are in the same plane. Heels are aligned, front knees bent. Hips are pointed to the side. Shoulders relaxed, upper body vertical. Look over that front finger, front fingers. Inhale, flip your front palm, lean forward, and then lean back for reverse warrior. Keep that front knee nice and bent. Front toes relaxed. Inhale, straighten that front leg, top hand up for reverse triangle. Maybe lift that top hand up a little bit higher. Keep the legs where they are. Bring the arms to warrior B arms. And exhale, lean forward. And then when you can lean forward, no more tilt. Triangle again, actively looking for lifting up with that top hand. Keeping that top shoulder in the same plane as your legs. Front hand's not doing much, you're not dumping down. Trying to find equal effort between the left and right side of your body in this expression. Exhale, bend that front knee. Take whichever variation of side angle you choose to take today. Remember, if you're in that bind, try to keep that shoulder back in the same plane as your legs. And we're gonna come through revolved half moon from lunge. So plant that right hand, left arm out, and twist open to your left side. Get that right leg back. Exhale, release. Walk yourself back out to a wide-legged forward fold. But instead of doing a forward fold, we're going to do a really wide down dog. Hands way out, legs way out. Look back, heels out, toes in a little bit. Now we'll walk our hands back to our right foot. Come through a side lunge. Whichever variation is right for you. Maybe the front toes pop up. Back toes point out 45 degree angle. Maybe your arms come up. Maybe you sit up nice and tall or taller. And then walk yourself over to the other side. You can take a side lunge here. You don't have to go anywhere near as deep as I am or you could go much deeper. Just do what feels good on your knee and your hips. And plant your hands and walk yourself to the front of the mat. Let's take a vinyasa flow. High push up. To low push up. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Exhale for down dog. 
and come into child's pose for a couple breaths. Maybe take a sip of water. Inhale, come back up to hands and knees. Now we're gonna do a combination of humble warrior, half or full splits and pigeon or figure four. Inhale your right leg behind you, parallel to the earth, toes coming down. Exhale, glide it forward. Bring your foot out to the outside of your hands. Start in high lizard for a few breaths. And you can exhale, you can bring your forearms towards the earth or onto a block. And you can take a balancing posture, which I'm not gonna do today because I'm feeling a bit hot out here. Or you can take Bird of Paradise by bringing your right foot all the way off to the side, the sole of the foot planted. I'm gonna use my hand to support my head so my ear pod and sunglasses don't pop out, but normally you just rest your head to the earth. Just top. This right hand under your foot and arm under is just under your leg is just for support, helping you surrender with confidence. This looks difficult. It's really not. It's actually the easiest of the things I would show normally, which is why I like to do it. Things that feel powerful but are easy to achieve are kind of a reminder of what makes yoga amazing. And that is that your body knows how to do things. Your breath knows how to do things. But your mind sometimes gets in the way or your history sometimes gets in the way. And so it's just about unlearning the things that are preventing you from being more relaxed and more comfortable. We're gonna slowly rise up and now bring that front leg straight and you can either stay in a half split or slide it further forward to a fuller expression of splits. You could bring a block under your hamstring or under your hands if you'd like for extra support. You can bring your forehead towards your knee if that's in your practice. Then you're welcome to come back to high lizard. If you have bad knees, come onto your back and bring your knee to your chest or take a figure four, which I teach sometimes in my other classes. So if you don't know what that is, um, just let me know or you can find it online, I'm sure. Otherwise, come through pigeon, heel toe in your foot out to the side of your mat and start tall, don't immediately dump into pigeon. Your knees should be outside your hips, your shins roughly parallel to the front of your mat. Sit up tall with your hands on your hips. And then exhale, slowly start to surrender to a point of mild discomfort, but never pain. So maybe that's just here. Maybe you slide your forearms all the way forward. Maybe bend your elbows, hands together. Do a little tricep engagement, your thumbs come to your C7, a big bump on the back of your neck. You're welcome to stay here for a few more breaths. Or come take active pigeon by planting your hands. Right hand in front of your right shin, bending your left knee, grabbing that foot with your left hand and right arm forward and up. Or maybe your hand comes up over your head and your elbow around your foot and your hands interlaced behind you. Mine aren't quite doing that, but sometimes just thinking about it helps get a little deeper stretch. Exhale, release, plant your hands. And come to hands and knees and just bring that right hip out and just shake it out. If you want, you can do wild thing here. I'm not really feeling that today, so. Just gonna stay here. I'm gonna, from hands and knees, just rock my hips gently side to side, continuing to breathe. And then from hands and knees, planting my hand, inhale, left leg behind me, exhale, glide it forward into high lizard. Let's stay here for a couple breaths. And then you could plant your hands down and forearms on the earth or on a block. You can take a balancing posture by planting your hands and just resting on your forearms here. Or my favorite, bird of paradise. 
and again, I'm just using my hand so I don't break my glasses or um, knock my ear pot out with my ear. This arm under here is helping support that leg. And then slowly work your way back up to high lizard. If you're in bird paradise, you can just swing your back leg around and come back up their hands and knees. And you can inhale that left leg back forward. And now we're gonna straighten it for half splits or slide it further forward into a pigeon, if you'd, I mean into a fuller splits if you'd like. And I invite you to, when you're ready, work your way back up to lizard. And then either come on your back for figure four or knee to chest. Or you can throw your foot out to the side. Rise up. Start tall for pigeon. Check your alignment as your shin is parallel to the front of your mat as you can make it. Mine doesn't seem to want to stay as parallel today on this side. And that's totally fine. And exhale, surrender. Maybe come all the way your forearms. I'm going to skip the triceps on this side because this side's definitely tighter all around today. Mm -hmm. Inhale, slowly rise up. If you want to stay in pigeon, stay for a couple more breaths. Otherwise, Take active pigeon by planting your hand in front of your shin, bending the back knee, hand around your foot, top hand forward or up overhead if you like. Exhale, release your hands to the earth and maybe shake out that back hip through a few circles. Maybe rock side to side a bit. And then when you're ready, go ahead and come down to Sphinx. Forms parallel in front of them to the side of your mat and to each other. And just a gentle low back stretch. You can plant the tops of your feet down and lift off your knees. You can also lift off your core if you'd like. If this is too much, your elbows can move further away from your body to make it more relaxing. Or if you need a little more, straighten your arms for seal. Inundated with insects. <laughs> Exhale, slowly release yourself to the earth. We're going to come into bow pose. Bend your knees. The closer your knees are together, the more challenging, the wider they are, the more easy it is. And like when we do a bridge, we're going to bring one arm back and shoulder back. Other hand, both hands are outside our ankles. Inhale, rest forehead of the earth. And exhale, gently kick up onto your solar plexus. Inhale, lower down a little bit. Exhale, kick up and just keep moving with your own breath. And then when you've had enough, just straighten your arms and legs out for a star or for a super person. And exhale, release. Arms like a T, rest your hands on top of each other and your forehead on your hand heels out toes together and just breathe for a couple breaths before we flip onto our back inhale one arm up overhead roll to that side onto your back bring your knees to your chest just gently rock side to side 
Maybe take small circles and bring your arms out like a T. Do whatever spinal twist variation you prefer. I'm just gonna exhale my knees to my left. Right shoulder stays planted. Look over to my right shoulder. If you need support on your side, you can place a block under your knees or between them. You could straighten your legs out towards your hand if you like. Just do what's right for you. As you start to slow down, maybe reflect on an intention for your practice today. Maybe you just need health or patience or kindness. Inhale through center and exhale off to the left. Or, sorry. Whatever side you didn't do before. I'm going to keep the opposite shoulder down. Look over that shoulder. Do what's right for you. Again, maybe straighten your legs if that feels good for you. And go back to center. Punch your feet wide and just windshield wiper your hips a few times. I realize I probably shortchanged that side a little bit. So if you need to, just go back to that side and spinal twist a little bit longer. From here, you can already come into Shavasana or you can take whatever you need to finish off your practice. It could be a bridge or shoulder stand or headstand or handstand. I'm going to shoulder stand, supporting my, my mid back with my hands. Basically, for me to, taking pressure off my head, for me to tripod with my elbows and my upper back or shoulders. And maybe I come into a plow and I gently. Surrender. You could also just bring your legs straight up in the air, supporting your sacrum on a block if that's good for you. If you just need a light inversion. You could come into supported fish or shavasana. Relax, arms up overhead, palms face up. Maybe your shoulders work their way a little closer together. Help relax your chest and neck and shoulders and back. Heels in, toes out, legs wide, arms wide. And just breathe and relax. I ran a little bit slow today. Doesn't really matter, but <laughs> I try to keep the videos around an hour. So you're welcome to stay in Shavasana for five or 10 minutes if you'd like. And pause the video here. Or if you've had enough and you're ready for your day to continue, you can just start to bring some life back in your hands and feet. And wiggle your fingers and toes, windshield wiper your ankles and wrists side to side. Maybe bring your arms up overhead, heels down, take one more stretch, and bring your knees to your chest, rock side to side a couple times. Bring one arm up overhead and rest on that side for a couple breaths. And inhale, work your way back up to seated. Maybe sit on the edge of a block. We're gonna finish like we started class. We're gonna inhale our arms up overhead. Exhale, release to the earth. And as you do this a few more times with your own breath, just reflect on how you feel now compared to just one hour ago. Do you feel warmer, looser, more relaxed, tingly? And then on your fourth one, just exhale, bring your hands to heart center, fingers spread wide, palms to your, or thumbs to your sternum. Bow gently. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. Thank yourself for making time to get what you need for your yoga practice. Hopefully you can take something away from this into your life. I bow to the light and sound and all of you. Namaste. Have a wonderful day. And if you have any 
questions or feedback or anything you want to know, just let me know. And otherwise, I will see you tomorrow or whenever. I don't know when you're watching this, obviously. But um, as a reminder, I'm doing this during the coronavirus outbreak. Yoga has really helped me personally get my immune system strong and keep my sanity. And hopefully it brings some of those benefits to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Can't find the button to end it. <laughs> there we go.